In this video, I'm going to show you how you can start your own dropshipping business in Australia, one of the biggest and most rising e-commerce markets today. So if you are ever curious about tapping into this fairly untapped marketplace and making some great sales and profit along the way, stay right where you are. I'm going to show you the way. Quick intro and let's go. Welcome back, I'm Liran from AutoDS and as you know in this video you're going to learn how to start your own dropshipping business in Australia and of course it doesn't matter whether you live there or not and that's one of the things that I just simply love about the dropshipping business model. We can dropship from anywhere to anywhere so no matter where you live around the world you can dropship to Australia and make great profits and sales along the way. I'm going to show you how but one second before we get there do not forget to join our Facebook community group and our Discord channel where thousands of dropshippers help you succeed on a daily basis from their own experiences. So join our communities right after watching this video, of course, and have fun. Now, why dropship in Australia in the first place? I'll even take it one step before that. The dropshipping business model allows you to have your own online store and sell products without actually holding them in stock. Only after we make a sale on our stores, only then do we go to our supplier's websites, purchase the product and ship it to the buyer who bought it from our store. Our profit is anywhere between our source price, how much we pay the supplier and how much the buyer paid us, minus of course our selling channel fees. That is the dropshipping business model in a nutshell. It comes with a low risk and high reward as long as we learn to do it the right way. So what about Australia then? Why should we dropship in Australia in the first place? Let me show you this chart over here by Statista showing the growing revenue in Australia e-commerce sales year by year with the forecasted sales, the prediction of what's going to be also in the future. So as you can see right here from 2017, and this is where we are today, 2022, where here we can see that revenue in the e-commerce market is projected to reach almost $54 billion in 2022, which we are just about to finish. So that's where we're at right here. Okay, this is about $54 billion. And then this is 2023, 2024, 25, 26, and 2027, just about five years from now, it's going to almost double in size. So is it a good idea to join the Australian market? You tell me. Now, besides that, of course, from what we're seeing in AutoDS in all of our statistics, sales in Australia e-commerce stores are definitely on the rise. That is why I want to make this video so that if you are ever curious about it, or if you haven't thought about it, and this might give you an idea to maybe take this into this direction, then of course, it's a good thing that you found this video. I haven't said it before, but if this is the type of content that you like to see, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can always stay updated and learn about the next step in your e-commerce business. That being said, let's jump right back to it. So we saw about some of the profitability and should we be dropshipping in Australia in the first place, but let's get the legal stuff out of the way. Is it legal to dropship in Australia in the first place, especially if we do not live there? So how does that work? Dropshipping is a legal business model to begin with. You can sell whatever you want to wherever you want, but of course that comes with its limitations. That includes the products that we can and cannot sell. So we always want to stay away from prohibited products do not sell products that have anything to do with tobacco, firearms, products that are hazardous, that are dangerous, that have a choking hazards to babies and little kids. I personally stay away from dropshipping liquids. Do not dropship flammable material and anything that might get you in trouble over time. And of course, stay away from big brands, copyrighted, trademarked and patented items. Now that leaves you with tens of millions of products that you actually can dropship. And we're also going to tap into what are the best products and what are some of the best categories for dropshipping today, especially to the Australian audience. But dropshipping is definitely legal in Australia. Now, besides what we can and cannot sell, we also have to abide to the tax and regulations. So how does the tax work when it comes to dropshipping in Australia? So if you do not live in Australia, you will have to pay GST and that stands for goods and service tax. Now we have that also not only in Australia, but when we're dropshipping to there, we're going to have to collect tax and that comes to around 10% of your selling price. For more info on that, you can simply read about GST in the Australian government's taxation office website. As you can see right here, goods and services is a broad based tax of 10% on most goods, services and other other items sold or consumed in Australia. So if you're dropshipping to there, then of course you will have to pay that extra 10%. You will have to get that payment from your buyer, from your customer and pay it to the Australian government, which you have a full explanation on how to do that right here. If you want links to all of this, let me know in the comments below and I will reply 
with the link to these pages so that you can learn how to register for GST and pay for it when the time comes. But if you're dropshipping using eBay, eBay will collect the sales tax for you and pay it to the Australian government or US government or anywhere else that you're selling. So you don't have to worry about it if you're dropshipping on eBay, but in other places like Shopify, Wix, WooCommerce, and so forth, you will be the one responsible for collecting your sales tax and paying it to the Australian government when the time comes. So that's regarding tax or in other words, GST. Now regarding, do I need to have a business license in order to dropship in Australia? You do need to have a business license if you live in Australia. If you don't live in Australia, then you'll have to see what the government in your country states when it comes to selling to other countries. So in this example, you need to speak with your local accountant, which I'm sure you have one unless you haven't gotten started yet, and ask them, do you need to start a business in order to collect money from people around the world? Most likely, they'll tell you that the answer is yes, and they'll also let you know about income tax and other sorts of taxes that you'll need to pay. Now, don't worry about all of this. Tax is here, tax is there. At the end of the day, you're starting a low risk, high reward business model called dropshipping, no surprise there, which allows you to make profits without an initial investment or with a very, very small initial investment. And besides that, you can and you should mark up your profits. So if you're selling at about a 40 to 60% profit margin range and you're selling the right products to the right audience, you won't really have to worry or be bummed out about taxes because you're making profits and you're going to be pretty happy about that. And you're going to think about what other things I can do to scale my business and make more money and more profits. So that's regarding having a business license, tax obligations, and what product we can and cannot sell to the Australian audience. Now, besides the rise in sales that I showed you using Statista's graph, are there any other good reasons why we should be dropshipping in Australia? So let's go over some of the pros and cons. Some of the pros are there's little to no upfront investment. That's because we're using the dropshipping business model and we don't have to spend money on inventory or spend money on a physical brick and mortar store. Here, we're simply starting an online store, which pretty much costs no money. And then we start listing items to try and sell them. And then our expenses come in a form of how much we're going to try to market these products or selling channel expenses, which shouldn't be too high when we're just starting off. So that comes, of course, with a low risk and high reward, the dropshipping business model and scalability. It's easy to scale a dropshipping business because no money is limiting you from doing so. Now, let's talk about some of the cons of dropshipping in Australia. One of them can be high competition, but I don't want to use that here because all of the examples that I've seen and also from my own experience, there is almost no competition when dropshipping in Australia. That doesn't mean that dropshippers are not there. They're definitely there. But now when you compare it to other regions like the USA, but with some products, you may experience some saturation and some competition, but that won't happen with most of the products that you'll be testing. The second con is that you don't really have much control over the stock since you're using the dropshipping business model. So if your supplier runs out of stock, you're going to have to bring the products out of stock on your website too. But then again, you can always use AutoDS's price and stock monitoring so that all of this will be automated for you. When something goes out of stock on your supplier's website, it'll also go out of stock on your website and the same thing for the price changes and so forth. The third con is that it may be sometimes difficult to build a brand with a dropshipping business model since other dropshippers can dropship that same item. So you can't really brand it and private label it with your brand. That can only happen if you're purchasing stock from a supplier. And in this instance, it's not using the dropshipping business model anymore. So it's more difficult to build a brand around the dropshipping business model but on the other hand, you can brand your store, make it look like a brand, which is what thousands of dropshippers are doing. And it does help make your store look like a branded store, at least for the most part, until you find that really good seller for you. And then maybe you can think about buying inventory and white labeling it. And if you're interested in learning more about this, check out our videos on white label dropshipping and private label dropshipping so you can understand the difference between the two and see which one is good for your business. Now, having said all of that, let's jump straight into the action and and start with who are the top suppliers that we should use when dropshipping to Australia. Now, before choosing what supplier to use to dropship to Australia, my advice here is to go with a supplier that's actually storing the goods inside Australia so that you can ship them quickly to your domestic audience in Australia. So when we're shipping from Australia to Australia, our shipping times are increased. We can get our packages to our customers' houses much, much faster. And this way, our customers are going to 
to be happy. They're going to be super satisfied that they're going to get their packages so quick. Nowadays, nobody wants to wait two, three, four weeks to get their packages. And the same goes for your Australian audience. So when dropshipping to Australia, look for suppliers who have the goods in Australia so that we won't have to dropship from China to Australia or from the United Kingdom or from the United States to Australia. Therefore, once again, we're going to have fast shipping times, happy customers, and that will definitely play out well for the long term of our dropshipping business. So now I'm going to list the best Australian suppliers with warehouses in Australia so that you can ship millions of products quickly to your Australian targeted audience. Now, if you want access to the suppliers list, just leave me a comment below this video and I'll send you a link to this blog article, but I'll also leave a link to it right below this video in the description. Okay, so you'll have the whole suppliers list and everything else that I'm going over in this video. But of course, do stay tuned in this video because I always like to throw in extra bonus value. Okay, so let's go over the suppliers list and learn about some of the best suppliers to use for our Australian dropshipping business. Number one on the list is AliExpress Australia. Now here, it's important to know that AliExpress doesn't seem to have any warehouses in Australia, at least not yet, but you can use them to find out what are the best trending products to sell when selling to Australia or any other market. If you want to learn about the new and improved AliExpress dropshipping center, I've got a video to it right here. And if you want to watch it, just leave me a comment below the video and I'll send you the link to it. Okay, so after you learn how to use the AliExpress dropshipping center, you can also see from there what products are selling well in any region around the world that you want, including Australia. So once you learn about the best selling products from the dropshipping center, you can look for those products using other suppliers that have those products in Australian warehouses. The second supplier is Amazon Australia. Now, Amazon, I I'm not their best friend, at least not anymore. And that simply is because they lock out buyer accounts that are using it for drop shipping. So if you're using Amazon as your supplier and you ship out multiple products to different addresses, at one point or another, they're going to lock out your buyer account. So there are ways to go around this, but the best way to go around it is to work with other suppliers, more suppliers, and never put all of your eggs in one basket. Do not work with only one dropshipping supplier, but rather work with multiple. But you can use Amazon Australia to see what are the best sellers, what are the movers and shakers, or in other words, the most trending products in the last 24 to 48 hours in any region, including Australia. So that's another way to find out what products are trending there, and then use other suppliers to look for those products in Australian warehouses. The third supplier is Banggood Australia. This is pretty much the same as Amazon Australia and AliExpress Australia. You can use them for product research because they simply don't seem to have too many warehouses in Australia as of yet. Okay, now the rest of the suppliers, they will have warehouses in Australia, but you do need to learn how to do product research and you can use suppliers to get great indications of what's selling well in those specific regions. Okay, so use those three AliExpress, Banggood and Amazon to learn about the best sellers in Australia. And I'm gonna go through more product research methods later down this video. The fourth supplier is Target Australia. They've got warehouses in Australia. They've got same day or two day shipping to Australia and easy returns. So use Target Australia when looking for drop shipping products using your product research methods. The next supplier is Catch. Then you've got Bella Boutique, Dash Design, Dear Jane Medical, Daring Diva, Rumble Coffee, and there's actually more, but those are the top Australian suppliers that we were able to find to help your dropshipping business grow and thrive. So we talked about AliExpress, we talked about Amazon, we talked about Banggood, we talked about Target Australia. Here's what Catch's front page looks like. So they've got daily deals going on. They've got the one pass program to help you get more discounts on your orders, tracking information updates, and relatively fast shipping. Bella Boutique is mainly jewelry items. Okay, so that's the main niche there. High quality products, free shipping, and non-branded packaging. So your buyers won't know that the package came from a company called Bella Boutique. Then you've got Dash Design. Okay, so as you can see right here, it's mainly in the home improvement niche. They've got thousands of products, a huge range of designer decors, and they also offer great customer support. Then you've got Dear Jane Medical. So this, of course, is in the medical niche. There's a lot of sales happening in this niche, but do be careful on what you're selling and what you're promising that the product will do to whoever buys it, because a lot of the things that have to do with uh, medical and with health and beauty is all of this before and after. So the customer will really expect something to happen after using the device. And if it doesn't, then usually, you know, they'll get kind of mad. So don't just sell junk, sell really proven high quality products that have high reviews from customers who bought them. Okay, most supplier websites will show you customer reviews. So that kind of gives you a small indication of 
do customers actually like this product? Is it made of high quality? Okay, then you've got Daring Diva. So this, of course, is in the fashion niche. And Rumble Coffee, if you want to drop ship coffee. Okay, so those are some of the best Australian suppliers. Now let's go over some of the best drop shipping products to sell in Australia. Okay, so we're going to start with the main categories. Okay, so we've got the fashion, health and beauty, home and garden, consumer electronics, jewelry and accessories, toys and baby products, and outdoor and sports. Now let's dive into what products are selling really well inside those categories, especially to the Australian audience, which is what's really important for us in this video. Okay, so we're going to start off with the fashion niche, which sold a little over $26 billion in revenue during 2022. So here are some of the best selling products inside the fashion niche. Feminine long sleeve blouse, casual cropped tank tops, crisscross ribbed halter tops, solid color satin long skirts, padded camisole tops, loose and thin sweatpants, men's short sleeve polo shirt, summer linen wide pants, 3D all over print men's shirt, and high waist biker shorts for women. Okay, so that's a small example of those bestsellers in the fashion niche to the Australian consumer. So if you like the fashion niche, if it speaks to you, do not miss out on that category, on those products. And of course, for more, you wanna test the market, you wanna see what they actually interact with, what they engage with, remove the slow movers, those that simply aren't selling for you, and keep adding more products or similar products to those that are selling for you, to those that the Australian consumers are actually engaging with. And that way you can start to learn what works. From there, it's easy and fun to scale. The second niche is health and beauty. So let's see what's selling really well for the Australian audience under this category. We've got silicon ear cleaners, rechargeable water flosser, high frequency massage gun, electric tooth whitener, manicure and pedicure tool set, back posture corrector, laser hair removal epilator, peel off latex for nail art, stainless steel nail clippers, and rainbow color nail polish sets. Now again, guys, this is a small example of huge best sellers for the Australian market. It doesn't start and end with these products, but our data shows that these products are selling by the thousands. The third category is home and garden. It's actually one of my personal and professional favorite categories. Let's go over some of the products that are selling really well there. So we've got breathable flower bags, plant labels, stand up weeder and root removal tools, soil testers, kitchen food scales, folding rack hangers for clothes, no drill bathroom shelves, chargeable mini bag sealers, light sensor switch detector, and cabinet wallpaper stickers. Again, a small example of great products from the home and garden niche, but there are many, many more that are best sellers. Some are evergreen, some are seasonal. If you want more product ideas, leave a comment below this video. The third category, consumer electronics. And as you can see in this chart right here, consumer electronics is on the rise in Australia and going nowhere anytime soon. The best consumer electronics to sell in Australia, smartwatches, large size gaming mouse pads, and I've got one right here. You just can't see it because the camera is not looking at it, but mine is about this long and I've got my keyboard and my mouse on it and I don't live in Australia, but it's a great setter there too. Smartphone car holders, wireless headphone headbands, adjustable VR head straps. VR is, it's gonna just continue trending in the next years to come. Wireless home security alarm systems, finger covers for game controllers, LED photography lamp with tripod stands, Bluetooth AUX adapters, and universal AC remote controls. Again, a small example of some products that you can sell really well in Australia, but do not limit your product research just to these products. These are just the first examples that you should start off with, but use the methods that I talked about to research for products, and I'll even show you more methods soon. The next category is jewelry and accessories. These products are evergreen. They sell well all year long, but usually Q4 around Christmas time is the best time to sell jewelry products when everybody's buying gifts, especially in the jewelry niche. The first product under the jewelry and accessory niche is rectangular hair clips, vintage elastic choker necklace, natural stone crystal pendants, split ring connectors, earring clasp hooks, solid color chain necklace, blue heart pendant necklace, love letter envelope pendant necklace. So lots of necklaces with different types of pendants that are selling really well. Zipper jewelry roll bag and do-it-yourself beads for bracelets. Then we've got toys and baby products. Now, I talked about what toys and baby products you shouldn't sell, like big brands and those that are dangerous, that come with small parts that, you know, kids can choke on or babies. Stay away from those products and only sell the right ones. So here are some of the best toys and hobbies to sell to the Australian consumer. Magic Rubik's Cubes, Beyblade Launchers, LCD Writing Tablets, Sticky Ball Dart Boards, 
nappy changing bags, cotton baby short socks, silicon teether round beads, waterproof silicon baby bib, mini dollhouse supermarket food, and soft air bubble ball. Search for those products using your Australian suppliers when you are looking for toys and hobbies. And of course, keep your eye on the lookout because there are thousands of them that you can easily resell. Next, outdoor and sports. In this category that raked in over $1 billion in sales in the previous year, here are some of the best sellers from that. Armband case for running, adjustable kayak seats, surfboard bicycle carriers, snorkel diving masks. And I'm sure that you guys can all see how this is very relatable to Australians. Wrist strength exercise hunting trail cameras, float pool loungers, professional swimming goggles, ultra light trekking poles, and waterproof camp sleeping bags. So those are some of the best categories and the best products under those categories to sell. But of course, continue taking all the tips that I'm giving you throughout this video. Do not start and end only with those niches and do not start and end only with those products. Use that as your base and continue your way from there testing, seeing what works, scaling, and watching your success and profits increase as time goes on. Okay, enough about suppliers, enough about products. Now let's learn how to start a dropshipping business in Australia step by step. So the first thing that you wanna do before starting your Australian dropshipping business is to know what products you're actually going to sell. So your first few hours, your first several hours are going to go down into product research. Now, this is one of the most important parts when running your dropshipping business, and you're never gonna stop researching for products as long as you're looking for growth. We always wanna sell the right products to our shoppers, the products that are in demand, that don't have too much competition. And even if they do have competition, do not worry about it because there are many things that you can do to differentiate yourself from the competition, stand out and rake in those extra sales. Okay, so step number one is finding the best selling Australian products. In order to do that, you have to use multiple product research methods as follows. You're gonna use Google Trends for the Australian market to see what's peaking there in terms of audience interest. So every product that you find you're gonna to go to Google Trends, search for the keyword of that product and make sure that you're checking out the region of Australia. You're also gonna search your supplier's best seller sections. So as I mentioned, like going to AliExpress's dropshipping center or going to Amazon's best seller section, Amazon Australia. So for example, let's go to Amazon Australia. Okay, and then I'll also show you the AliExpress dropshipping center, but you also have the video for that. But in any case, we're looking right now at amazon.com.au, which is Amazon Australia. Then what you're gonna do is click on best sellers. So if they don't put that here, then we can find it by going to new releases. And from there, we should also have best sellers, which is right here. Okay, so you've got your best sellers and you've also got your movers and shakers, which is the biggest trends over the past 24 hours that's updating constantly. So you wanna stick to the categories that are good for the dropshipping business model. For example, a baby products, beauty, clothing, shoes, accessories, electronics, computer parts, not the computers themselves, but, but better to resell computer parts, garden, electronics, health, household, and personal care, home, home improvement, kitchen and dining, musical instruments, pet supplies, and sports, fitness, and outdoors, and also toys and games. So those are the best categories from Amazon that you can find great dropshipping products from. And here we're looking at anything that can ship from into Australia. But anyway, this is where you're gonna do your product research and Movers and Shakers is a great place to do that. So you're gonna learn about product trends here. Then you're gonna to go to Google Trends and search for that keyword, see if that product is trending in Australia. And the other thing that I wanted to show you is the AliExpress dropshipping center. So let me just sign into my AliExpress account. Okay, and bring that right over here. So you're gonna go to account, my orders. Then you're gonna click on DS Center right here, which is their dropshipping center. And here you've got your best sellers. Okay, so here you're gonna learn about trending products. You can dive into categories. You can use their filters to see categories, to see to see where they can ship from. So you can check out ships from Australia. Maybe they'll have some uh, items. Let's see, let's create a quick search. And then we've got all these products. Let's see if they can really ship from Australia. So I chose ship from Australia, but you're gonna have to check out the products because from my experience with AliExpress, they don't always ship from that country. But what's good about the dropshipping center is that you can analyze these products while you're hovering over them. So you can see I'm gonna hover over this graphics card GPU holder and well, the graph there isn't working. Let's go to another one. Okay, like this one right here. So we've got these gloves, then you've got the seven days growth rate. So you got the, the increase and the decrease according to the sales history. Okay, so you've got this uh, bag right here. You can see the sales chart here. 
You can see how much it sold, of course, the rating, which is what you can see in AliExpress anyway. But what's special here is that all of these products are best sellers. You're not going to see products that sold like zero or 10 times. Okay, so, so use the filters, get into the categories that you want to check out and find some of the best product ideas from the AliExpress Dropshipping Center. Okay, so you've got the checking out the best sellers on your supplier's websites. You've got the AliExpress Dropshipping Center. You've also got the AutoDS Marketplace. So if you're using AutoDS or thought about using it, you're going to get this free product research tool embedded inside the system. So as you can see right here, I'm in the AutoDS Marketplace and here I can see any product that can ship to any country that I want. So in this example, we're checking out anything that can ship to Australia in the Australian dollar currency. You can, of course, change that to whatever you want. Ships from, so you can change your ship from, your price. So you've got more filters like price range and categories. Okay, but right now we're looking at everything. And these are some of the hot selling products that I can get from the AutoDS product research tool. I can see more images from the variation here from the product listing. And of course, if I click on it, I'll go inside the product listing to learn more about it, like the full product description, where it can ship from, the reviews, how many orders it has on the supplier's website, the item specifications, the policies, and as I mentioned, customer reviews and more. So you got all the information coming from this product research tool embedded inside AutoDS, and you can import it to your store by just hovering over import draft and of course, importing that to the drafts page of your store. So it's that easy to get those products on your stores, even from the internal product research tool. So you don't have to go out to look for products and then bring them in, even though, of course, you can also do that. Then once it's on the drafts page, you can optimize the product like the title, the collections, if you're on Shopify, the product location and the automation settings like price monitoring, stock monitoring, automatic orders, completely optimize the product's descriptions, all of the variations, which in this case, for this phone holder, we've got 100 variations, which all seem to be in stock, all of the products images, the item specifications, everything gets transported or gets transferred from the supplier's website to your Australian dropshipping store in just a matter of seconds. But let's go back to product research. So we talked about the AutoDS product research tool, searching your supplier's bestsellers websites, searching AliExpress's dropshipping center and using Google Trends. You've also got more things like spying on the competition. There are tools out there that allow you to spy on your competition, see what ads they're running, see what products they're selling, whether they're dropshipping using Shopify, WooCommerce, Wix, or even eBay. So there's a lot of pay tools to do that. I'm not going to recommend any in this video, but there are enough out there. So if you Want to put a budget aside for product research, you could also do that. But I do advise to also do your own manual research because this way you're also going to find a whole bunch of products that you wouldn't be able to find otherwise. And more wonderful ways to get great product ideas that are trending for your dropshipping stores is by checking out our blog page in the product finding and bestseller section and our YouTube channel under the sell these now playlist where we have hundreds and hundreds of pieces of content in both sections where you can learn about the most trending products to sell on your stores. Now the product research dropshipping spreadsheet is also going to help you find or better yet, narrow down the best products that you found when you were researching for products. It'll help you narrow them down and really pinpoint the products rate with the highest probability to sell in your stores. If you want access to the free product research spreadsheet, leave a comment below this video and I'll send you the link. So after we found our products, we know what we want to add to our stores. We need to select an Australian supplier to get these products from and list them on our stores. So I went over the best suppliers earlier in this video, so I don't have to go over that again. But when looking for an Australian supplier, keep in mind these really important factors. You wanna look for an Australian suppliers that offers clear business policies. In other words, what are the shipping policies? What are the payment policies? What are the return policies? And is it all practical that I can just pass it on to my buyers and they will be happy about it? Next, you wanna look for suppliers that have positive reviews. So positive reviews as a supplier and also positive reviews in the products that they are selling from customers who bought them and are satisfied with them. So that way we know that we're dealing with high quality products and decrease our chances of customer returns. Then you want to look for a supplier, of course, that has a domestic warehouse. So you want to look for a supplier that can ship from Australia. We already talked about that, so I'm not going to stress it out some more. You want to look for suppliers that have a wide product range. You can look for niche specific suppliers, but it's better to go for general suppliers that can offer products in different categories so that you can test it out yourself. Last but not least, you want a supplier that offers fast shipping speeds and great customer service so that you can offer the same thing to your buyers. Now, after choosing your supplier, you need to set up your store on a selling channel. So here is where you choose if you want to sell on eBay, on Shopify, on Wix, on WooCommerce, 
where do you want to sell? And if your answer to that is, I don't know, then let me try to help you out, understand what is the best selling channel to choose for your business. The main differences are if you're dropshipping on marketplaces like eBay, you're going to get free organic traffic. You don't have to spend money on marketing. But on the other hand, eBay will limit new seller accounts to only 10 items, and you'll have to slowly work your way up to learn how to increase your seller limits. If you want to learn how to dropship successfully on eBay, let me know and I'll send you a great ebook and the best content that we have to teach you how to do that. So leave a comment below this video. Besides that, you have Shopify, Wix, WooCommerce, which is a WordPress plugin, and these will help you host an online store and have also your own domain name. So it's fully customizable. You're not going to have a 10 item limit. You can list thousands of products on your first day. No one is limiting you from doing anything. It's your website completely. And when you acquire your customer's email addresses, as opposed to other selling channels like eBay, you're actually going to have the customer's real email address that you can later send them email marketing campaigns and get sales without having to spend any money on them. But on the downside in the beginning, when you don't have traffic in your store, you're going to have to get people to know that your store exists. This is if you're not dropshipping on eBay. So here you're going to have to market your stores using methods like PPC marketing, pay-per-click ads. Let me leave a link below the video if you want to learn more about that or anything else that you want to learn about that I talked about in this video that I can't teach in this video because it'll just make it too long as if it's not long enough already. So drop off any questions you have below this video and I will not only answer but also help you by linking you to content where you can learn more, read more and watch more. So we've got PPC campaigns. You can also run email email marketing. As I suggested, you can also use influencer marketing platforms. There are many ways to market your store. If you want to learn more about these methods or other methods, again, let me know below this video. So after you choose your selling channel, you have to actually go and create your store on that selling channel. And we have all the info on that. Just let me know if that's what you want to learn. Step number four is to import products to your store. Now that you have your store or your selling channel, you can add the products that you found during the first step, the product research phase, using the suppliers in the second stage to import their products products, the ones that you found from your product research to your dropshipping store. And that can be done really, really easily. Let me just show you a quick example of how easy that can be done when using automation platforms like AutoDS that can help you with price monitoring, stock monitoring, quick product importing, automate all of your dropshipping orders and so much more. All right, so let me just go inside any product, okay? Like this dog carrier right here. We're just gonna hover over the URL, copy it. Then I'll go to the AutoDS platform with my Australian dropshipping store. I'm gonna import a single product. Okay, then I'm gonna choose my eBay Australia store. Then I'm gonna enter the URL of the product that I wanna add. Okay, the supplier is AliExpress. Then I'm gonna click on edit now quick. Then I'll be able to completely optimize and edit the product like all of these right here that you see on my drafts page where you can edit any product here before adding them to your store like I showed you a few minutes ago. So it just takes a few seconds to add any product and you can even add complete product pages. For example, I can search for dog bowl. Like let's say dog bowls are going really well for you in Australia and you want to grab all of these dog bowls. You can do all of that using the AutoDS extension. So just add the AutoDS Chrome extension to your Chrome browser, search for whatever you want, then click on the circle icon, click on extract. Now all of the 60 dog bowls that I have on this page got extracted into the extension. I'm going to click on export as CSV. Then as you see, a CSV file was downloaded onto my computer. On AutoDS, I'm going to click on add products. Only this time, instead of single, I'm going to go for multiple. Then I'm going to go to upload CSV. Then I'm going to drag and drop that CSV file right here or double click to open up my browser window. Double click on it. And that's all there is to it. Add it to your draft section. And that is how you can add tens to hundreds to even thousands of products to your dropshipping store in just a matter of seconds. Now, after you imported your products to your store, it's time to let people know that your store exists. So this is the marketing section. And I already talked about the marketing methods to increase your product's visibility, build your brand awareness. Yes, even if you're dropshipping, encourage repeat customers to buy from your store again and again, while also testing products, seeing what works, what doesn't work, crossing out what doesn't work, learning about that, and continuing to scale your experience and scale your sales by adding more products similar to those that are working well for you. So we got all the methods that I talked about and more. If this is what you guys want to learn about, again, leave me a comment below this video and I'll send you even more information, more things that you need to know and learn to get the marketing part down correctly, especially because marketing usually requires a budget and you don't want to spend too much before you know what product is actually going to work for you. The next step is to fulfill your customer's orders because now if you did everything correctly up until this stage, it's inevitable that at this stage you're going to start getting sales. Now you need to actually fulfill your orders and there are a few ways of doing that. First, there's the manual method. So you're going to go to your supplier's website, add the product to your cart, check out, fill in your payment information, make sure that you're shipping to the customer's address and not to your own and the supplier will ship it directly to the end customer 
customer. The buyer will get the product and of course they'll be happy. Do not forget to also update tracking information once you get it from your supplier's website. And that is the manual way of doing it. But what are you going to do once you start making 10, 15, 50, 100 orders per day? You don't want to spend all day just fulfilling orders because you're not going to be able to grow your business anywhere beyond that. So here is where automatic orders comes in. And this is what scalability is all about. So you can automate your orders in two ways when using AutoDS. The first way is automatic orders, meaning it's going to use your buyer accounts to go to your supplier's website and purchase the products, but it can even happen while you're traveling, while you're sleeping, and you don't really have to worry about that. But if you're working with suppliers that can lock your accounts, or if you simply don't want to have so many buyer accounts in so many suppliers' websites, then you can use the Fulfill by AutoDS service, which is just like automatic orders, only here it's not using your buyer accounts, it uses AutoDS's buyer accounts, so you don't have to worry once again about a credit line at the bank, buyer accounts being locked, or having multiple buyer accounts and managing all your finances at the end of the month. It's really easy when everything happens under one platform. So with the Fulfilled by AutoDS system, all of your balance is kept inside your AutoDS wallet, the money that comes in, the money that goes out, and it makes it much easier to also handle your finances at the end of the month, not worrying about your own buyer accounts, with of course automatic tracking number updates, tracking conversions if you need, easy returns, and so much more. If you want to learn more about the service, again, let me know in the comments below, and I will give you a full tutorial on how it works and how to use it. And the seventh and final step is to provide exceptional customer service because you're not here to make a quick dollar and you're not here to be in business for a week or just a month. You want to be here for the long run. You want to be here for years on end, or at least that's what I hope that you want. And in order to do that, we're going to have to offer the best customer service that we can to our buyers. This means that every time a buyer reaches out to us, we're going to answer them in the first 24 hours. And when a buyer wants to return a product for whatever reason, as long as it complies with your policies, we're also going to reply as fast as possible and get them that return label or simply answer them the right way as fast as we can. We're also going to process our returns and refunds promptly. So if we owe a return, we're going to give that return. If we owe a refund, we're going to give it to them and we're not going to give our buyers a hard time. We're also going to send personalized messages. Okay, so you can also do that if you're automating your orders with AutoDS, but even if you're processing your orders manually, you can send your buyers messages after they purchase something from your store send them a message saying thank you for purchasing from us here's your tracking information we hope that you're satisfied with your product of course after they got it if you don't mind come back and leave us a positive review or don't forget to refer your friends and family to also purchase from us and we'll also give you a discount for doing so you can get creative but use customized messages once a customer buys something from you that's a small asset you've got a customer that gave his money to you and you can communicate with that buyer and try to get something else out of that while keeping them completely satisfied when working with you. Then you're of course going to include things like an FAQ, a frequently asked questions page on your website, unless you're on eBay, so that customers will know exactly what to expect when purchasing from your store. And that also comes with shipping policies, return policies, and all of that. I can send you templates to all these pages if you want. Let me know in the comments below. And that's pretty much it. Take care of your customers. Look every day for customer messages. Think of ways of how you can upsell, cross-sell, but also give them the service that they deserve. And if you're dropshipping on eBay, you can handle all of your customers' inquiries and requests under the customer service menu on the left side. Even if you have multiple eBay stores, you can handle all of your customers' messages under one screen, see what messages you have, reply to them, save chat snippets for repetitive messages that you send to your customers, and so much more. All of that, of course, is included inside the system. But the key takeaway way here is take care of your customers and this way your business is going to keep running for years and years on end and that wraps up this video of how to dropship in australia let me know if this video helped you understand how to dropship in australia if you've already done it or if you implemented it let me know how it goes and i hope that you appreciated and enjoyed this video show me by liking this video subscribing to our channel if you haven't done so yet and do not forget to join our new discord channel our facebook community group where thousands of dropshippers help each other succeed on a daily basis thank you for watching good luck with your australian dropshipping business and i'll see you in the next video